Every aircraft has a speed limit. If you fly too fast, bad things will happen. Or does it? Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm a captain instructor on ATR aircraft. In this video, I will talk about what can happen if you fly too fast. When you fly too slow, the wings will lose lift and stall. That's easy to predict and easy to avoid. Just don't fly too slow. But what happens if you fly too fast? Well, many things can happen. You can get vibrations, stability problems, and even structural damage. The most feared phenomenon is flutter. Flutter is uncontained vibrations and can rapidly lead to the destruction of an aircraft. Because of this, aircraft are certified to have a maximum operating speed, well below a speed where the performance mentioned effects can be experienced. On transport category aircraft, which are airliners, the maximum operating speeds are called VMO and MMO. VMO is the velocity in knots or other unit of measure. MMO is the maximum operating Mach number, where 1.0 is the speed of sound. The Mach number is a limitation at high altitudes. In this video, I will keep it simple and focus on VMO, but the principle is the same for MMO. When designing the airplane, the manufacturer defines a design dive speed, VD. This is the absolutely highest speed the airplane is planned to reach during certification tests. The regulation states that VMO must be sufficiently below VD to make it highly improbable that the latter speeds will be inadvertently exceeded in operations. In other words, if you fly at VMO and experience a disturbance that causes a momentary increase in airspeed, the airplane must be able to return to VMO within a reasonable time and without showing any dangerous behavior. The regulation don't give any numbers, but to give an ID, Airbus defined VMO to be about 35 knots less than VD. VMO is marked on the airspeed indicator with a red and white band called the barber pole. On ATR 42 and 72, VMO is 250 knots. In addition to speed limitations, there are limitations for how much load the aircraft can endure without getting damaged. Transport category aircraft have a limitation between minus 1.0 g and plus 2.5 g. 1 g is the force of gravity. So, at 2.5 g, you will feel 2.5 times heavier than you are. And I will weigh 200 kilos. The g load varies with turbulence and movement of the elevators. When the pilot pulls back on the control column, the nose pitches up, causing the angle of attack to increase, and with it, the lift. This results in an increased G-load. On the 12th of October 2019, an ATR-42-600, operated by Japan Air Commuter, Flight 3763 departed Kagoshima in southern Japan. The destination was Tanegashima, a small island just 70 nautical miles away. The crew expected a smooth flight. After takeoff, they climbed to 11,000 feet and set course for Tanegashima. When they get closer, they started descent. Normal speed during descent is 240 knots which gives a margin of 10 knots to VMO. About 15 seconds after they start the descent, the wind changed abruptly from 20 knots tailwind to 20 knots headwind. 
Such a rapid change in wind is called wind shear. When the aircraft entered the wind shear, the indicated airspeed started to increase rapidly. The first officer, who was pilot flying, reduced the power to idle, but this was not enough. In an attempt to stop the speed from increasing further, the first officer pulled back on the control column. But the aircraft was heavy on the controls and responded slowly. Then the captain grabbed his control column and pulled hard. This is the transcript from the flight data recorder. The red line is the left control column, the captain's and the black line is the right control column, the first officer's. As you can see, it was the captain who pulled the hardest. The g-force reached 3.3, and maximum speed was 251 knots, just one knot over VMO. This triggered overspeed warning. At that moment, the cabin attendant was walking through the cabin, she fell and suffered a fracture in her ankle. Two seconds later, the first officer started to push on the control column while the captain was still pulling. Then, the first officer released the controls and it was only the captain who was flying. The flight stabilized and a few minutes later, the crew decided to return to Kagoshima, where they landed safely. Because of the injury to the cabin attendant, the incident was classified as an accident. Just a few days ago, I published a video about the flight controls where I explain how important it is that just one pilot is pilot flying. The video is here. If both pilots apply opposite controls in pitch, there's a risk that elevators will disconnect. That will leave pilot flying with only one elevator. When the pilots observed that the speed started to increase, they reacted by pulling hard on the control column. They felt that the elevator control was very heavy. There's a reason for that. The elevators don't have control boost like spring tabs or balance tabs. Therefore, the elevators will be heavy at high speeds. This has a purpose. It prevents you from overstressing the aircraft at high speeds. But the captain must have been very strong because he applied a force of more than 1,000 Newton. That's in excess of 100 kg force. As a result, the structural limitation of 2.5G was exceeded. Thankfully, there was no damage to the aircraft. The ATR is a tough bird. It was more serious that the cabin attendant was injured. So, was it necessary for the pilots to pull so hard? As I said earlier, transport category aircraft have a healthy safety margin when it comes to overspeed. Therefore, exceeding VMO with 10 or 20 or even 30 knots is not dangerous. Yes, you will have to write a report, but the aircraft is not damaged. It's much worse to pull high Gs, especially at high speeds. Many high-performance private airplanes have crashed because the owner has lost control in clouds. The aircraft entered a dive and the pilot pulled so many Gs that the airplane has broken up. Therefore, if you understand that you are about to overspeed, do this. 1. Reduce power to idle. 2. If the nose is below the horizon, Rise it gently up to the horizon. 3. If you have speed brakes, use them. And 3. Wait for the speed to decrease. Disregard the overspeed warning. It's just a nuisance. The important thing is, do not pull up the nose like this. Okay? That's all I have for this time. Please support my channel by sharing with your friends and all that. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning!